Um, thanks, first and foremost, for letting me come. I know you've got a big tournament coming up. When you asked me to come here, I was thinking, what can I tell them about playing for England? What's it mean? What's it mean for me to play for England? And I can only take you back to like the, the 2002 World Cup against, um, in Brazil, against Brazil in Japan with Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, Roberto Carlos, Catherine, all the best players. And I'm standing there in the national anthem, look along the line, see them guys there. And then I looked in the, sta in the stand and see my family. And it was like, it just all just hit me. And I got emotional, started, almost started crying, welling up. And it was just all about playing for England, here in the national anthem, all them things added together. And to be fair, the game, we, we lost the game. Um, I didn't really play, didn't really stamp my authority on the game. And I remember finishing that game after and thinking, just feeling numb. We went out of the World Cup as players, especially like you're going to go to a tournament now, don't let the emotion take over the occasion for you. And that's one of the best bits of advice that I gave myself. I listened to other people, then it just hit me one time after that, that moment. Huge moment, huge time in my life. My family's all there, all screaming at the sidelines. Don't let that affect how you play. It's another game. You've got to go out there and produce. When you get emotional, you can't play your best football when you're emotional. That's like, if I become a manager, which I want to do one day, I don't like emotional defenders because you don't think straight when you're emotional. As defenders, you, you've got to be calm, you've got to be cool, you've got to be aggressive, yeah, but you've got to be doing that in a controlled state of mind. You're going to a tournament, yeah, but the main, main focus is what you're going there for. Why are you going to the tournament? Yeah, it's great to play for England, but enjoy that when you get back, when you've got a trophy. When you're on your way there, it's why am I going there? How am I going to get my hands on a trophy? How am I going to prepare myself? What am I going to do? Am I going to, how am I going to sleep? When am I going to sleep? Preparation is key. I went to the World Cup in 1998. This seems like a million of miles away from you lot, but I went and didn't play. I was disappointed, but I was like a sponge. When I went on that tournament, I watched everything. They wouldn't have known that. I was watching Shearer when he was resting, how, what he was eating pre-match. What was his dinner different with pre-match? Was it, was it different at breakfast? Was it different at lunch, at dinner time? Tony Adams, how was he in the change room? How did he prepare himself in the change room? I used to watch all these type of things, but you're doing that now. You're lucky I didn't go to a kids' tournament. When you get in the dressing rooms, you've got to identify who is the man who's got your shirt at the moment. Who is that guy? Let's find him. He's got my shirt. What does he do? I want to watch him train. I'm going to see how he trains. I'm going to train better than him every day. How many runs does he do? I'm doing more. When he's in the gym, I'm in the gym. When he's gone, I'm in the gym again. That's how you've got to treat it. That's the way I was. When I went to a World Cup, I ain't going again next time to be a bit part of player. I want to go and play. And when I play, I want to be an integral part of this team. That's the way I used to think all the time. But when I'm that, I want to be captain. We can't all be captains, but you've got to have something to aim at, something that's realistic, that's there to be aimed at, that you're improving every day. And it's all about sacrifice as well. You've got Cristiano Ronaldo who come to the club as a good player, talented player, but you think he's, he's, he is what he is today. He ain't. He's worked. He didn't have a great shot when he come. He had a powerful shot, but he went everywhere. He used to go out after, he was embarrassed, pick up a bag of balls, and he used to walk around like this to the other pitch right over the other side so he could hide behind the trees. Ronnie, where are you going, man? No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm just going over there. Just going over there, gone. What's wrong with you? And you see, after a few months, you see, where's Ronnie going? Oh, he's, he's doing shooting, does shooting, or he does step overs. He used to put these mad things on his feet, these weights, and do mad step overs. I used to think, are you mad? What are you doing? Until he started bamboozling people. And then it was even that. You get to that stage where he's flying for Man United. It ain't enough. He wants to be the best. He ain't, having tw he ain't, he ain't getting the ball and doing all these mad tricks all the time. He wants efficiency, goals, assists. That's all he, was, that's all he cared about. But it's about bettering yourself. You get to under 16s, I want to get in the 18s. You get in the 18s, I want to get in the 21s. I want to get in the first team. Do you know what I mean? And when I get in the first team, then you start setting targets again. That's all I've done all my life. From under 16s, through to the last day I played football, I had targets. You, it's names, you get names, and you think, well, I'm playing against Thierry Henry, Thierry Henry this week. I've got to be right. So I used to visualise the night before Thierry Henry this week, um, Suarez next week, or Zidane this week, or whatever. So all you do is just visualise that player. That's all I used to do. The minute before I put my head on the pillow, I'm thinking about his best moves. I keep playing that over in my mind, all his best attributes, and then I wake up in the morning, I do it again, but then I do me combating what he's doing, me taking the ball off him, me winning the first header. So I'd be doing, I'd do stuff like that all the time. So it weren't fear, but I just used to always make myself really aware of anyone I played against. And to be fair, my hardest games were always against people like, um, like Kevin Davis. If someone was stronger than me physically, 
I wouldn't want him to get hold of me, to touch me. Mm. I would never, if I was a centre half, defend, defend against someone. If he's stronger than me, then I don't want him to ever try and touch me and pin me, because mm. he knows where I am. I used to always let them, the ball come in, let them take a touch and then go bang, come through, the, try and nick the ball through their legs, or when the ball's coming through, then get my leg round the side or whatever. But I never let him be able to, because as soon as he pinned me, I can't move. Mm. And he's, he's in control of me, because I was quick. Mm. I could always, I'd even tap him on the side just tap them on the side as the ball's coming in and they'd think I'm coming that side and then can come around this side. Mm. And start, I'd play all the time, try and mm. play, play with them. What about Henri Suarez's, how, how, how would you sort of? Well, they're different. Like for instance, Suarez, <coughs> when he used to play, I remember he played at Anfield, he was on fire at the time, smashing it, bang, banging in enough goals. And um, I just used to let him, let him kind of run at me. Mm. I'd kind of jockey, jockey, and make him make a decision. I, used to, I thought he was better when you, if you had a nibble, mm. he could react quick mm. and then, then beat you. And I used to think if I let him make the decision, he's not as good. Mm. Don't get me wrong, he's a great player, but if, if he's always waiting for the defender to make a move and then he'll react and then go. Mm. For me now, at the moment, when he's fit, Aguero's the best number nine. Mm. In terms of playing against, he's, it's, a, it's, like, it's a nightmare. Because mm. he's small, stocky, strong, quick as hell, and will go both ways. He will go left and shoot with his left and go right and shoot. Normally, like Suarez, I'll push him on his left all day long and say, go on, because I know he's going to cut back on his right. But with someone like Aguero, you show him left, he'll take that left, push it, and obviously it's hard to get back a yard against someone so quick, especially in the box, and he bangs it both feet. So for me, he was the hardest to play against for, for a long time for me. Vidic. It was just a partnership, you know, when it's just like, it just happens. We didn't work on it in training. It's almost like I could just, we could smell each other's movement. You just knew, it was instinct. I knew when he was going to go tight because I'd come around and cover. I knew that when he was going to drop off, I'd push in. Do you know what I mean? I knew when he was in a bit of trouble, I'd always hang back and out for him to be, be that, that ball, that safety net trip for him. He was my best partner I played with, favourite partner I played with all the time. It's, it's, two, it's two different superstars, like... like the way I could, best way to describe it is Messi's like a, a genius. Like he shouldn't be that good. He's small. If you're going to build a footballer, you build Ronaldo. So Messi's working from a disadvantage straight away, and he's doing ridiculous things. Like he's just he's like an artist. He's like a genius. Ronaldo is like a, a driven, well-oiled machine who's made himself that 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 superstar. Messi seems like he's more natural. It's just been given to him. The, the, someone looked down and said, "You're the man." And he went out there and done it. And he's just, just a beautiful footballer. There's two different players, but uh, the, the respect for both of them is, is, is huge. I think it's just great that we're both wearing this time where we can appreciate these two like ridiculous footballers putting up numbers that no one's ever even seen. You're the elite. You're one of very few that get this opportunity. You know what I mean? And realising that and saying, I'm going to grasp this chance and take it with both hands. The national anthem when it's on, a full ass at Wembley. That's what you've got to be dreaming about. You've got to be dreaming of going there and feeling that the chills on the back of your spine, your family up in the stands, screaming, your mum crying. It's, it's, it's nice, it's good stuff.